Okay, for part A, we are to use our table and we are going to make a left Riemann sum with six sub intervals. And so we are estimating 0 to 120 f at t dt is approximately, and using your left Riemann sum, you are going to find the difference in your t values, which is basically your x, and we're going to think of f at t as our y. And so we're going to have our length times our width. The width here is going to be 20 times. The length, notice we have two different lengths, and so we're going to choose the leftmost because this is a left Riemann sum. So we would have 20 times 1.2 plus, and we do another interval. So we're going to have 20 times 2.8 plus another width, 20 times 4.0 plus 20 more times 4.7. And so we're going to continue this out plus another 20 times 5.1 and finally 20 times 5.2. And so that's going to be the setup for your left Riemann. And whenever you number crunch all of that, you should get 460. Now just like the other problem, how we had a left Riemann, we're going to do a right Riemann. So we still set up the same thing. We're still integrating from 0 to 120. We are doing an estimate here. And this time we're still doing our width times our length, but now we're doing a right Riemann, so that length is going to come from the rightmost side. So our estimate, we're going to have our width, which is 20 times, and then here we're going to use our right side, so that's going to be times 2.8 plus 20 again times 4.0 plus 20 times, and here 4.7, and so hopefully you start seeing the pattern here, and notice you will go all the way through to that very last point, and then plus 20 times 4.8. And so this time you should end up with a sum of 532. Now we're going to look at the midpoint sum, and notice this time we're going to have three sub intervals because we're going to have to do some skipping to get to that actual midpoint. So this time our um, width is not going to be 0 to 20, but it's going to be 0 all the way out to 40, and we're going to use the midpoint of that interval to determine the length of the rectangle. So we're going to have that difference, we're going to have 40 times 2.8 plus, and then again from 40 we're going to go all the way out to 80. So that's another 40 times the middle or midpoint of that, 4.7, plus here from 80 all the way out to 120, which is 40 times here in the middle, again, 5.2. And so that's going to be your midpoint, and that's going to give you 508. For the last type of sum we'll discuss, this is going to be our trapezoidal rule with three subintervals. And a quick review here, the trapezoid sum, or the trapezoid rule, the area formula, very important for us to remember, that area formula is going to be one half the height times the sum of the bases. And our height is going to be our x values, and our base values will be our y values. All right, so setting up this one, we're going to have one half. The height is going to be the difference here. And notice we need three subintervals, so we're going to go from 0 all the way out to 40. So that height there is going to be 40. 
And then the sum of the basis is going to use these two y values. Those are going to be your basis. So 1.2 plus 4.0. And we repeat this process. So from 40 way out to 80. So again, that's another 1 half times 40 times the sum of your basis, 4.0 plus 5.1. And then our final uh, sum, we're going to have one half again. We're going from 80 all the way out to 120. So that's one half 40 times 5.1 plus 4.8. And when we trudge through all of that, we will end up with 484. Okay, for our next problem, we are going to do a left Riemann sum. And in that, we are going to need four subintervals. So let's go ahead and set this up. So we will look at our difference here from 0 to 40. So we're going to have 40 for our width. And then our length here, we're going to using our left. So we're going to use 150 plus, and here we're going to have 30 times again our left, so that's going to be 180, plus here we're going to have 20, and then times 195. So notice this time you're having different widths, and that's perfectly okay for that to happen. And that's going to be times 184. And so this is going to be a rather large number. It looks like you're going to have 17,140. Okay, now this next one, we're doing a right Riemann. We should have four subintervals. And so very similar to the previous, we are going to look at our width. It's going to be 40. But this time we're looking at the right Riemann. So we're going to take the right side to be the length of that rectangle. So it's 40 times 180, plus our next width here is going to be 30 times 195, plus 20 times 184, and finally 10 times 172. And number crunching that, you should have 18,450. All right, our next one is going to be the trapezoid rule. We need four subintervals. And so again, we are going to have the area of that trapezoid is going to be one half times the height, which is going to come from the top. That's going to be 40 times the sum of the bases. So that's 150 plus 180. And plus again, one half. The height here is going to be 30 times the sum of the basis, so that's 180 plus 195, plus 1 half times 20, times that sum 195, plus 184, and then finally our last interval, 1 half times 10, times the sum of the basis, 184 plus 172. And so working this one out, it looks like you should get an answer of 17,795. For our next example, we are going to use the graph instead of a table, but we are still going to be able to set up the trapezoidal sum. Notice for the first one, we need three subintervals. And if we look at our points along our graph, finding those three subintervals, we're just going to skip over from one all the way over to three, and then three to five, and then five to seven. So each one of these will have um, a height of two. So again, remember that area formula is one half the height times the sum of the basis. And so for part A with three subintervals, we're going to have one half times here, we're going to have a height of two times the sum of the basis 
here and then here's your other base and so this is kind of a trapezoid turned on its side and we see there's the other side if we connect those so our base will be one and then the other base length would be four and then plus one half again that height and then the sum of these bases here we're going to repeat that base so that's going to be four plus and then we're going to go out to this base here which is going to be six plus and then our final interval one half again that height is two and then some of the bases we would repeat that side again which is going to be six plus this length here which is going to be four after you put all that together you should end up with 25. okay so now we're going to move on to the next um, part part b and this time you're going to have six sub intervals instead of three so that's going to change our intervals up here so i'm going to take all that off and you're still going to have your same um, points of course those points aren't going to change so for six sub intervals then we would have one here two three four five and six so we see the height for each one of those is going to be one and then when we start sketching in here notice you're going to have each y value used so for this one you're going to have your area is going to be one half times one times the sum of your bases so one plus two plus one half again times one that height there times the sum of your bases which is going to be two plus and this one's all the way up to four plus one half again times one times that height and then we're going to have four plus five plus one half times again the height times five plus and that one's going to be up at five again plus and let's see we're going to do a couple more one half times one times and back at five again six plus five and finally our last interval one half times one times five plus four and when you do all of that number crunching you should end up with an area of 49 over two Okay, similar to the previous problem, we are going to go through though and looking at a graph and we are going to use four equal subdivisions and we're going to approximate from one to nine. And so we are looking for a midpoint. So it looks like here we have, there's our width. And then with our rectangle though, we're going to use the middle part to be the length. So for this one, the area, of course, is length times width. And so we're going to have 2 times 2 plus, and again, we need a midpoint. So I'm going to go from 3 to 5. So again, that's another width of 2. But then the height, I'm going to use that midpoint. So that's going to be 4 plus, and again, let's see, we need to do from we're going to go from five all the way out to seven and then again that height there is going to be three so i'm going to have two times three and then finally the last is going to be from seven to nine so two again and the midpoint there is going to be three all right and so whenever you go through and do all of that you should end up with 24. OK, 
Okay, and for the last one, um, I don't see it telling us how many intervals to do. Um, so we're just going to go through all of them. We are doing the trapezoid rule. So we're going to have one half times the height. And again, that's going to be looking at the length that we're going to have from here to here. And then the sum of our bases. So from here, we're going to have um, a height of 1. And then the sum of our bases is going to be 0 plus 1.4. Plus, and again, 1 half times this height here from 1 to 2. So that's going to be 1. And then times the sum of the bases, 1.4 plus 1.8 plus 1 half times 1. And then we're going to say times, and now we're going to have 1.8 plus 2.2 plus, and notice this 1 half times 1 is still going to be the same throughout. Then we're going to have 2.2 plus 3.0 plus one half times one. And again, 3.0 or 2.2, no, 3.0 plus 4.2 plus one half times one again, finally. And then 4.2 plus 3.6. And when you number crunch all of that, you should get 14.4.